Welcome to This Is My Architecture. I'm Matt from AWS. If you've been watching this series, you might have seen a video where we talked about best practices for serverless application development on AWS. That was a This Is My Code video, and today we're going to pick off where we left off and do a This Is My Architecture video where we walk through the CI-CD pipeline of that application. So I'm joined by Michael J from Slalom. Thanks for being here today. Thank you, Matt. Glad to be here. So for viewers that might not have seen the last video, tell us a little bit about Slalom. Slalom is a premier AWS consulting partner that we engage with our clients to help build better software. Great. So last time when we were talking, we walked through, this is my code video, where you explained a serverless application and the best practices for writing the code. Mm -hmm. And today we're, we're looking at the CI CD pipeline, picking up where we left off. Really, we had the code all written, ready to go. What happens when we actually go and deploy it to AWS, right? Yeah, great question. And that's a, a process that really uh, comes back to software development lifecycle that we should have put into a good development process. And it starts here with our source code. Yeah. Right. Uh, here we're showing Git as our source code repository. Could be many different uh, hosted Git repositories. Or it could be other than Git. But some of the practices we're going to talk about focus on feature branching, and that's really kind of close to Specific how Git's to Git. used, right? Yeah. One of the core pieces of this is that as part of uh, the Git repository, we want to have support for webhooks. And webhooks are going to send a message out to our CI environment, our CI tool set. And here we're showing code build as our, as our CI tools. This could also be Jenkins or Team City or any other CI tool that, that's capable of these kinds of features. So that first, first part is important because you mentioned webhooks. And automation is so important these days with software development and what happens next for mm -hmm. software deployment. So with webhooks, it's automatically calling for every git push. Is that right? On every commit push, yes, that's right. So that can happen on our master branch or on the feature branches that other developers are working on as well. OK, great. So we call it code build, and we often refer to them as build servers. But it's doing more than just building. Isn't that right? That's right. It instantiates a, a container that can run whatever process that you want inside that container. And here we've, we've implemented our build and pipeline process that, that fits to, to build and deploy the, the application. Great. So here I see you have build and lint and test and package. Walk us through these different parts of it. Well, the first part, what we do is part of when we showed, uh, this is my code, we showed many different classes, many different files within the Lambda function. Yeah. And those get packaged together as part of a web pack process. Okay. That's here in the build. And that was specific to the TypeScript, TypeScript application that you Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. that could, this could also apply to C Sharp or Java or Python or whatever language you're building in. The next step is the linting, which is more of a static analysis uh, test against the code itself, yeah. the text of the code. Mm -hmm. OK, great. And so making sure the code looks OK is going to run OK. But then you also have to make sure that the, the logic of the code itself runs as expected. And that's what the tests are for, right? Here we are. The tests, these are unit tests that are written that can be executed directly against the code after it's built, before it's deployed. Those tests can run right on that code build container itself. So we actually saw some of those unit tests in the this is my code. And so this is actually executing those tests against the code. That's right. And it's good to get high level of coverage out of those unit tests, too. You can build reports and have those reports shipped off and, and displayed on a dashboard. Great. OK. And then you know, once, assuming it passes all the tests and gets <laughs> linted correctly, et cetera, you need to package it up in deployment. So what happens then? Well, the package and deploy is semantics of the, the terms from the SAM tools and okay. the AWS CloudFormation, that we package our SAM application first, which bundles the, the Lambda functions that have been built up and it pushes those out to S3. As a part of this package step, all of our build artifacts go to S3 to be maintained in, in S3 as our artifact repository. So this is really where the infrastructure meets the code, as we like to say. You're, you're using SAM, you said, right? That's right. OK, because mm -hmm. a lot of users ask us which one they should use. So in this case, you're using SAM. The serverless application model. Great. Mm -hmm. So your build artifacts get pushed into S3. So why are you using S3 for build artifacts? We found it to be excellent for uh, long-term, reliable storage mm -hmm. across all of the versions of the builds that happen from our, from our application. Since we're creating a build, we initiate a new build on every git push, we end up with a lot of builds. So with good file prefix organization in S3, all of those build artifacts get pushed into S3 to identify which version each build is, uh, is corresponding to and allows us to pull those out at a later time. 
Oh, great. So I could even like look at the buckets, the prefix names, the item names, as you said, or objects, and, yeah. and determine what, what it is. Mm -hmm. It's very browsable, as you would expect an artifact repository to be. Great. So when I first was talking through this with you, I was a little bit initially confused about why you had what looked like sort of two build phases here. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about the difference between what is represented here with code build and what pre what's represented here with the promote deploy test? Yeah, so this code build icon down below represents promoting to new environments. Okay. What we happened on, what happens here uh, up above, we may deploy this to a, a dev environment All right. uh, and, and interact with that. But if we want to get to a continuous delivery model where after having deployed to dev and tested dev and, and then want to continually deliver to the next environment, we, we iterate that over uh, other build projects. And here, this promote item here indicates that we're going to take that build artifact out of S3 and, and push it through the build process here to promote it to a QA environment or a UAT environment or ultimately to prod environment to get a continuous deployment model going. That makes a lot of sense. There's also a test phase here, but these aren't the unit tasks we were running at this phase. What types of tests are these? Right, these are post-deploy tests. Okay. In terms of a microservice or an API, those would be API tests or integration tests. Integration tests. You're actually hitting the deployed application and making sure that it's working with all of its external dependencies. So this is making sure that the code runs as expected, and this is making sure that the, the ap application is running as you'd expect it to. Right, after it's deployed. After it's deployed, mm -hmm. absolutely. Another part of this bit here is that uh, it, as part of the success of the build process itself, that webhook will communicate back to Git to show that it's got a successful build. So in, in, in the Git repository, if you've created a pull request, it'll have a build result of success or failure and gives that immediate feedback to development teams that the feature branch is passing the build, passing all tests, and deployed correctly. Yeah, I remember just a few short years ago, you'd package up your code, pass it to QA, and hope for the best, and a human would return it back to you with a long list. Those days are over. Right. Yeah. Okay, great. So we've, we've promoted a new environment, we've deployed it, we've run those integration tests. What happens next? Well, as part of the deployment here, this is, represents the, the whole stack of what a typical microservice API might look like with Route 53 with custom domains, yeah. uh, API gateway, which routes the request, and multiple Lambda functions that exist below the API gateway. So this deployment process would create this all as part of a uh, CloudFormation template, or uh, which is, uh, is used by the SAM template and the SAM model itself. So you're wrapping up your infrastructure as code with a CloudFormation template and deploying it. Now here we just have sort of one stack, but in fact you could have many stacks or different environments mm -hmm. or different use cases, users, et cetera, right? Exactly. So we really emphasize using multiple environments to progress through a continuous delivery model. And so this, uh, these five icons here can be duplicated across multiple environments where we get dev or QA or stage. Yeah. And these are different for each customer. Each project we recognize may need different may have different needs for what environments and what kind of quality gates happen at each of those. But that's part of building out the continuous delivery model. And one nice thing about this is because it's CloudFormation, you know, when you don't need it anymore, for example, like a dev environment or a QA environment, you can pull it down and you're not paying for it anymore. Right. Yeah. So the CloudFormation stacks help maintain these, these many Lambda functions together. Um, to, to interact with them as a stack instead of lots of individual Lambda functions. Great. So getting back to something you said earlier I just wanted to poke at a little bit was feature branches. Yes. So tell us a little bit more about feature branches. Well, one of the great things that serverless enables us to do yeah. is to be able to create multiple deployments of this without a lot of cost. Okay. It's free to be able to have Lambda functions sitting out there that aren't being used. Yeah. Or a, API, API gateways, gateways yeah. that aren't being used. So what we've implemented into our process is as part of the feature branch development process for developers, on every commit push, this, those feature branches will package and deploy out to a feature branch environment. And we may have dozens of these out all at one time because it's cheap. And what that enables us to do is to be able to interact with those feature branches as deployed applications the complete stack, Route 53, the API Gateway, and the Lambdas, and the DynamoDB, and the SMS messages, and whatever else might be in that microservice. Uh, deployed feature branch helps us to integrate with it if we have to uh, have a client calling API endpoints on that, or 
uh, allows us to run those integration tests that are part of this step here. That's great, because if I'm an deployment. individual developer and you know, I've been working on a feature that I've been assigned in a sprint or something, this allows me to actually test. Instead of just doing local testing, I can actually test against a deployed infrastructure stack. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very cool. And again, that feedback on the feature branch goes back into the pull request in the get source code. Great, so it's all documented and they can get full visibility. Yeah. Well, I love, you know, it's so affordable that you can do this. You can afford to have tons of feature branches even across large developer teams, right? Mm -hmm. Great. And, you know, I like how that empowers developers as well, sort of not just from a testing perspective, but also they can own their features and, and deploy them whenever they want. Yeah, in that case, we, we say that quality is, is everyone's responsibility. <laughs> I like that. So this is very neat how we picked up where we left off, and this is my code, took the code and really walked through a modern CI-CD uh, pipeline. You know, this is something we're trying to drive our, our joint customers uh, to do more of every day. So it's nice to see this up on the screen here. So thanks a lot for sharing it with us. All right, us. great. I'm happy to. And thanks a lot for watching. This is my architecture.